Hi, I'm Matt, and I'm Tim's Notes, and we talk about comics at the Comic Vault. Well guys, welcome to Season 2 of New This Week. This is our first episode, and I have yet to find a co-host. That's why Tim emailed me his notes. Uh, we are going to go with a new format this season where we are going to record our episodes on Sunday night or Monday so that it gives the viewer a chance to let us know what they liked or disliked throughout the week. If you read a book and you hated it, shoot me an email and be like, Matt, I hated this book. Or if you find a book and you're like, man, this book was awesome, shoot us an email and maybe we'll talk about it. Could be something I don't read. So I get an email that says, hey, Matt, check this book out. I'll read it and be like, whoa, we need to talk about this. So this is what we're going to do. You guys send me some feedback on what you liked and disliked throughout the week. And then I will create a show around it. Maybe you have a co-host, maybe not. But what we will do is talk about comic books. And this week, we're going to talk about some comic books. We're going to go with DC and Marvel this week. Uh, we're going with Blackest Night number 7. And New Avengers number 62. Bam. Alright. Uh, what did Tim think of New Avengers 62? Because that's what we're going to talk about it first. New Avengers 62, Tim said, I was expecting more. The Spider-Man stuff was the worst part, and the art was not to my taste. It was a decent explanation of Siege number one, but why did this just come out? I don't know, Tim. Why did this just come out? That was the interesting part here. This book right here came out this week. Siege number one, Siege number one came out six weeks ago. Marvel Comics, I'm going to ask you. Why does this book come out now when Siege number one came out six weeks ago? This should have came out two months ago to prepare us for Siege. But it didn't. And guess what? That puts the reader in a bad state of mind to read a book. You know, I might have a better opinion of this book if it came out on time. What I did not like about this book was Akuna's artwork. Akuna's artwork... I have a love-hate relationship, depending on who he draws or who inks him. But this one, I hated it. It just looked really... It was like bad. It was like a bad painting. Um, but again, sometimes I love you, but this time, thumbs down. Thumbs down. So, and then the other thing is, is, is Tim was right with uh, the Spider-Man part. Peter Parker, Spider-Man, has been written so dumb lately, it's just been horrible. And my thing is, is that... He graduated from college. He is a scientific person. He is, dealt, he is dealt with and teamed up with some of the greatest scientific minds in the Marvel Universe. I don't mean to be all geeky on you, but he's not a dumb person. He probably ranks up there in the top 15 smartest guys in the Marvel Universe. Yet, Marvel Comics is on this kick of draw, writing him as one of the dumber, flightier characters in the universe right now. And it's horrible! Because we've seen him be smart, we've seen him be dumb, we've seen him mature, and now he's regressed. But that's a whole nother start, and I don't want to talk about that. Peter Parker is a smart person, writing like a smart character. That's all I have to say about that. Alright, and the second book we're going to talk about today is Blackest Night number 7. This is where we're getting to the pinnacle issue of uh, Blackest Night, you know, the big reveal, eight's going to come up, big huge stuff going on. Let's see what Tim says about this one. Black is Night number 7. An enjoyable read, even if we saw the outcome coming from a mile away. I like the build-up, and it makes me excited for 8, and how they'll wrap up the thing, wrap up everything around it. So, that was Tim's input about that one. What I liked about Black is Night number 7 is it took me two times to read this book to like it. Because... I read issue 50 and 51 of Green Lantern, and the stuff that was in those books was so amazing, I was like, why isn't this in Blackest Night? Hal Jordan becoming Parallax again to fight the Spectre. That should be big time news. That should be in the main series. person walking through the door should, that's reading Blackest Night for the first time shouldn't have to weed through Green Lantern to find out all the stuff that's going on in this book. And my biggest problem is they make mention of the stuff that happens off screen. So, a person that 
isn't familiar with comics that's picking this book up for the first time is going, what is Sinestro talking about? Why is he pushing Hal Jordan out of the way? And DC Comics, I ask you, if you have these big events and you want to hook readers, try not to do that anymore. You know, because I, I like to give the customer something to read and be like, listen, read this book. Solid. Just from front to beginning, you can read it and you can enjoy it. And if you like it, then you can expand your horizons from there. But issue seven kind of went off screen. And I understand why you went off screen. The stuff that happened in 1551 was important. It should have been in here. Um, Lex Luthor and Larfie's fighting over stuff should not have been in here. That should have gone in Green Lantern. That could have lightened things up. But this should have been the power the power and the action packed, and you should have had the Spectre stuff, and that would be a big fight. And then, like, you know, then you have Sinistro, and he possesses the Entity. Whoa, the Entity. We find out what that is, and we see the first White Lantern. And the artwork in this book is amazing. And there are some glorious pages and some great, great uh, storylines going on here. I enjoy it so much. Um, everybody knows that, who knows me, that Green Lantern has been awesome. Um, but I was like, you know, there's, it, was, it, it could have been better. And that's, that's, I guess I hold Jeff Johns up to a higher standard. So, I mean, I expect better from you, Jeff. Um, but that's it. So I enjoyed these two books. You know, we're kind of nitpicking at why we didn't like them. Akuna's artwork is, is sometimes horrible. And, and, um, you know, some of the, some of the writing in the, the new Avengers book was kind of iffy. Uh, Black Sun 7 was, was, was a great book. It just was missing stuff from outside that should have came in. So, and, um, uh, that's this week we're talking about. So, um, tell me what you liked, tell me what you didn't like. And we'll see you next week. Take care, guys.